if they did uh, attempt to kill me or kill me like they killed Michael Jackson or JFK, uh, then, or uh, Aaron, what is the guy's name, Aaron Carter, the guy who wanted to talk to me uh, uh, about the Harley passing next situation. If they did do that, they would say, oh, it's Ye's mental health, so. I own half of Sony's publishing in, and I'm leaving them, and they, they're very angry at me. And Tommy Mottola is a devil. So it looks like Kanye West claims that Michael Jackson was eliminated by industry higher ups are back in the spotlight. And it's all thanks to this new lawsuit that was filed against Diddy. Now, if you're wondering what Diddy has to do with Michael Jackson's death, well, prepare to have your mind blown because the details are absolutely insane. So you remember how Kanye revealed his former personal trainer, Harley Pasternak, tried to institutionalize him and then everyone claimed Kanye was crazy? Well, what's actually crazy is that Harley was revealed to have previously worked as an intelligence agent for the Canadian military, and it now turns out Michael Jackson might have had his own Harley Pasternak. It's this guy, Fahim Mohammed, who also happens to be Diddy's chief of security. Fahim was mentioned several times in the latest lawsuit against Diddy filed by producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones. And according to Lil Rod, Fahim acted as the connection between Diddy and law enforcement, ensuring that Diddy could run what Lil Rod called criminal enterprise without any interference from the authorities. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's much more to unpack here. From Fahim alleged ties to government intelligence agencies, Michael Jackson's war against Sony Music, Diddy's connection to Sony Music higher-ups, and much, much more. So let's get into the details. I refuse to take this, right? You understand that if I had taken the medication, I would not be here and it would have been, woe is, he was deeply troubled, we miss him, we love his music though. Well, they would have Britney Spears too. I mean, look at they what they were the Michael Jackson or, or worse, yeah. Okay, so let's first talk about all the suspicious details about MJ's death and his highly publicized feud with Sony Music. On June 24, 2009, the night before Michael Jackson died, his personal physician, Dr. Murray, gave him a mix of meds to help him sleep. However, nothing was working, so in the morning hours of June 25th, Dr. Murray decided to administer a propofol injection. This seemingly did the trick, and Dr. Murray left Michael sleeping to use the bathroom. However, when he returned minutes later, he found Michael unresponsive with a weak pulse. Dr. Murray performed CPR for about 10 minutes and administered something to counteract the sedative OD. But surprisingly, a 911 call wasn't made until 12.21 p.m., almost an hour and a half after the initial discovery. Dr. Murray quickly became arrived. They performed CPR for another 42 minutes and then rushed Michael to the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center. But sadly, nothing could be done, and at 2.26 p.m. on June 25th, 2009, the King of pop was declared dead, and once the initial shock wore off, the internet became a breeding ground for various theories, with fans questioning the official story. According to the autopsy report, Michael's cause of death was propofol intoxication, and it was officially ruled as a homicide. Dr. Murray quickly became the prime suspect, especially when it was revealed that he had used an unconventional CPR method on Michael. The LAPD and the DEA launched an investigation, but MJ's fans speculated that the police might be trying to hide something. Reports in the media suggested that the LAPD didn't properly seal Michael's house to prevent mishandling of evidence, a claim later denied by the LAPD. Dr. Murray was eventually charged with involuntary manslaughter and sentenced to four years in prison. However, MJ's fans weren't satisfied because they believe Murray was just a scapegoat in a larger scheme. You see, Dr. Murray initially joined Michael's team in May 2009 through AEG Live, the promoter for MJ's final tour. Although AEG Live claimed that Michael personally wanted Dr. Murray, it was later revealed that AEG hired him in independently, and Michael didn't even sign the employment contract. Meanwhile, MJ's younger sister, LaToya, publicly claimed that his music catalog made him a target, and she said Michael knew someone was after him. And he knew that everything that was happening to him was not kosher, it wasn't right, and it disturbed him greatly. And he kept saying it over and over and over again. Yes, Dr. Murray was the fall guy, but it's more to it than just that. He named names, he told me people, he told me to be careful of this one and that one. In 2010, MJ's family took AEG to court, claiming they negligently hired Dr. Murray. During the trial, Michael's son Prince testified that his dad was pushed to the limit, and he heard him say multiple times that they were trying to kill him. Prince said his father would cry after phone calls, saying, quote, they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. 
But despite all this, the jury sided with AEG. However, the jury's decision didn't do much to change the minds of Michael's fans, who remained convinced that MJ was taken out by someone more powerful than Dr. Murray. The theory got even more traction when The Sun released notes allegedly written by Michael in the weeks leading up to his death. These notes included phrases like, they are trying to murder me, and the system wants to kill me for my catalog. In one note, MJ also talked about feeling pressured by AEG and having a bad feeling about his tour. And then a few years down the line, MJ's daughter Paris seemingly started pointing the finger at Sony and John Branca, the co-executor of the Michael Jackson estate. Paris liked a series of tweets slamming Sony and Branca, including one that said, we've been telling you the truth for seven effing years. Shame on any of you who sided with Michael Jackson's murderers. Now it's worth pointing out that Michael absolutely despised Sony and openly challenged them by first acquiring half of their catalog before leaving and becoming a free agent. He once even held up a sign on stage saying, Sony kills, and called then-CEO of Sony, Tommy Mottola, the devil. I've, I've generated several billion dollars for Sony, several billion, and um, they, they really thought that my mind is always on music and dancing, and, and, I, and it usually is, but they never thought that this performer, myself, would outthink them. Yeah! I own half of Sony's publishing, and, and I'm leaving them, and they, they're very angry at me because of it, but um, I just, I just did good business, you know? And Tommy Mottola is a devil. Okay, now let's tie all this in with Diddy and the new lawsuit against him. In the lawsuit, Rodney Lil Rod Jones alleges that Diddy's head of security, Fahim Muhammad, has close connections with law enforcement and was instrumental in helping Diddy cover up his alleged crimes. The lawsuit says, Mr. Combs made it clear that his head of security, Fahim Muhammad, had the power to make people and problems disappear. Mr. Combs instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Muhammad if they are ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. The lawsuit also claims that Diddy's powerful industry friends employed and empowered Fahim to pay off law enforcement. Now here's where it gets even crazier. So it turns out that Fahim Muhammad was also the head of security for Michael Jackson, and he was right there that fateful night when MJ passed away. And get this, when Fahim testified during Dr. Murray's trial, he revealed that he was hired as MJ's chief of security just 10 months before MJ died. At that point in time, how long had you worked security for Mr. Jackson? Approximately 10 months. And what were your responsibilities? I was the chief of his security, so uh, my responsibilities ranged from making sure his house was protected, making sure his children were protected, and making sure his day-to-day -day activities and movement was all safe and planned and mapped out. Now here's another wild part. Fahim had just graduated college with a business degree when he was hired as the head of MJ security and he was either 20 or 21. So we're supposed to believe that the king of pop decided to make a 20 year old with no experience his chief of security? Well, not exactly. According to social media user Ian Carroll, who recently went viral after investigating the connection between Diddy and Michael Jackson, someone else might have done the hiring on behalf of MJ. For most of Jackson's career, his head of security was Bill Bray, who was his mentor and basically his father and the two were extremely close. Bill ran his security until he was 70 when he retired and Jackson continued to pay his medical bills until he died at age 80. But then once Bill retired, Jackson was then protected by other security people that came and went and he wound up with this guy who has direct connections to Diddy's blackmail operations, who was directly complicit in covering up crimes for Diddy and covering up murders, covering up drug use, institution, human trafficking. This is the guy that was protecting Michael Jackson the day that he died. The day that he was overdosed on drugs after he was probably already asleep and the only witnesses, there, there were no witnesses to the crime. I'm honestly kind of surprised that this guy never got checked into as a suspect. Ian also pointed out that Fahim might have some ties to intelligence agencies, and fans are now saying he could be another one of those celebrity handlers. You know, kind of like what Kanye said about Harley Pasternak. I was looking up Fahim, and where did I find another article about him? On Penn State, the Wharton School. He didn't attend it as a student. He was invited as a speaker um, for this Wharton real estate entrepreneurship event, which makes perfect sense. He has a real estate investment company or whatever, but 
if you've been following along, you would know that the Wharton School comes up an awful lot when we're talking about intelligence agencies and people associated with the CIA and the FBI, etc. She thought it was interesting that they invited him to be a per, uh, honored speaker at their event. And now, here's the best part. Check this out. In, this is in all of his bios, by the way, but we're pointing it out now. In 2008, Fahim graduated from Sacramento State University with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Business Administration with a concentration in Real Estate and Marketing. Okay. Do you realize what's wrong with that yet? Anything coming to mind? When did Michael Jackson die? June 25th, 2009. Jackson died from cardiac arrest caused by a propofol and benzodiazepine overdose caused by his doctor, apparently. Um, hold up, hold the phone, pause. Why is a dude who just graduated college last year with a business and real estate degree, the head of security for the king of pop, for Michael Jackson, the most famous musician of all time? What's going on? So given that Kanye also supposedly almost got Michael Jackson Ed, fans are now saying there's simply no way all this is just one massive coincidence. Someone commented on Ian Carroll's video, one other coincidence is that Tommy Mottola sold his home on Star Island, Miami Beach, to P. Diddy. And another user wrote, he is right, everything the industry has done to Michael Jackson was the same blueprint they used for Kanye West. What a sad and corrupt world we live in. But what's your take on all this? Do you think Diddy's head of security had something to do with MJ's death? And does this mean Kanye nearly suffered the same fate? Leave your thoughts in the comment section and then check out this next video.